Hey guys, it's Lainey here. Um, we're actually going to try to do this little mock interview, but my life's kind of boring, so fingers crossed it goes well. But yeah, let's get started. So, as you guys know, my name's Lainey, and I'm 17 years old. I live in Maryland, and I've been twirling for 15 years. Um, I got my start in twirling actually from my mom. My mom and my grandmother both twirled batons, so I'm a generational baton twirler, and I guess it's just kind of in my blood. Um, but yeah, I'm a member of the Wheaton Dance Twirl Teams, and I'm the 2018 Miss Majorette of America, the NBTA Senior Grand National Twirling Champion, and the WBTF Junior Women's Gold Medalist which are all three titles I'm super duper duper proud of and we're just kind of like dreams come true, so yeah. Um, but the first question I'm gonna be asking um, the Lainey's Little Bugs will be, what's in your baton bag? So I'm gonna give you guys a little glimpse of what's in mine. This right here is my lovely baton bag made by Champion Baton Company. Um, if you know me personally personally at all, um, you know how much tigers mean to me, and there's a super long backstory to that, but that's a story for another time. Maybe in a future blog, we'll see. Um, <laughs> but to get started, let's check out my main pocket. Um, so if you open up the biggest zipper, you'll find all of my batons. I mainly twirl Starline Baton Company batons. Um, if you check out my website in my sponsors section, there's a link to their website plus a code you can use at checkout to get a discount. So go ahead and use that. Um, but it's kind of full in here because there's a lot of batons, obviously. I twirl basically every day of my life, so I need lots. Um, this right here is actually my light up baton. That is also a Starline Baton Company baton. And I use it a lot at my school when I'm performing, and the crowd just really loves it. They kind of go wild when they see a baton that lights up. It's kind of like how they react when they see fire as well, so that's pretty cool. But this here, it's my trusty steed, my stick. Um, this is incredible after a long weekend of practice or just some full out struts getting back into the season or something when you're a little bit sore. and. You just kind of like roll out your muscles with it and it makes the pain go away. It's like a magic, it's like magic. It's my magic stick peeps. Um, but yeah, um, in this front pocket here where my name is, that's where I keep all of my shoes. I'm not gonna open that because it'll make my room all stinky. You know, like hard work kind of makes your shoes rough. But um, since I'm not gonna open it, I will tell you guys what shoes I wear. 90% of the time I'm twirling in Pulse Jazz Shoes by Block. They're like my favorite. It feels like you're not really wearing shoes at all because they're so tight to your foot and just like makes a nice leg line when you're strutting as well. So they're my favorite. But I have this thing where I have to wear lace up shoes when I do solo. I don't know why. It's just like the superstition, I guess, that I've gotten over the years. Um, but I wear Block lace up jazz shoes. I'm not exactly sure what the specific name of them is, but those are my go-tos for solo. And then if it's slippery or, slippery or anything, I'll wear Venturelli's. Sometimes lace up, sometimes slip on. And then I do wear So Danza slip on sometimes if my pulse are too slippery for strut. They're a slip on jazz shoe that also have a nice leg line and everything. So those are kind of like a backup I wear. And then if I'm ever twirling outside, I tend to wear my, um, Cougars, also known as um, insteps, sorry. The words would not come to my brain, but also known as insteps. Those are great outside shoes because the tread's so thick. They don't wear out so quickly, it's nice. But moving on, um, in this back pocket, this is just all like my little handy dandy things. So I always keep an extra water just in case I forget one or something. Um, I keep leg warmers in case it's like super cold in the gym. Sometimes one of the gyms I practice at, it's like freezing in there. So I like to have them to keep my muscles warm and prevent injuries. This specific pair of leg warmers actually, Jennifer Marcus gave me and she got them in Japan and I was so excited. <laughs> it was incredible. Um, but yeah, I have a knee brace in here just in case, like not only for myself, but for my fellow teammates in case anything ever happens. and 
whatnot. So it's better to be safe than sorry. I also have a few hand towels. This one is from Savannah. She gave it to me. Um, she gave it to everybody on Team USA actually before Florida um, at the WBTF World Championships this past summer. Um, I also have my I Survived the Blue Curtain sweat towel from Only Twirlers. They sent it to me as a gift after Nationals and go ahead and check out their gear. Their website's linked on my Instagram somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'll link it in the description below um, for sure. But there's two other things in here that I think you guys would like to know about. I have this tape here. I'm pretty sure this is actually KT tape. Um, so you can use it for multiple things. Sometimes I cut the pieces in half and use it for um, my hand in case my callus ever busts or cracks or rips or anything, you know, all the fun stuff of twirling. <laughs> but um, you can also use it for injuries if you have them. So like if you have a loose knee or a sore knee or something, you can go ahead and wrap it up and keep it nice and protected. Um, the last thing I have in here is this sort quick, which you probably see at the grocery store. <laughs> they use it, ooh, see it's kind of old. It's falling apart on me. Um, they use it at the grocery store to separate the bags, um, but it makes my hands less sweaty. So if we're ever at a gym in the summer that doesn't have air conditioning, it keeps my hands from being less, it makes them less slippery so that my baton doesn't go a flying when I'm practicing hard and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I just kind of like wipe my hand on there and rub it in and it like dries them out nice and nice and fresh, fun and fresh at James Charles. <laughs> but yeah, so the next question um, I'd be asking Lainey's Little Bugs is, who is your big biggest role model? Now I just mentioned my biggest role model while going through my baton bag, but I'd have to say that it's Jennifer Marcus. Um, She's just been some someone I've looked up to for so long. Ever since I was little, I watched her in awe all the time. And she was just such a huge role model for me. And not only as a baton twirler, but as a human being. Like, she's the most incredible person I think I've ever met in my life. And I know that she'll be one of my best friends forever. And that just means the world to me. She's truly incredible. And I hope everybody gets the chance to meet her, really, because... She's the person you'd want to have in your life. She's just amazing, really. Um, let's see. The next question I'd be asking Lainey's Little Bugs is, what is your favorite twirling trick? So, for me, I'd have to say that my favorite twirling trick is actually my flat triple, which is probably weird for people to hear, but... When I first started doing this trick, um, it wasn't a trick you saw often. And if you did see it, you often saw male baton twirlers do it. So when I was a female doing it, and I was like probably 14 or 15 at the time, for the first time I ever competed it, um, I remember thinking that it was something that made me stand out from the rest. And I loved that it was kind of like my trademark at the time. Now you see a few more people doing it. Um, but when I first started doing the trick, it was really something that made me unique and different from others. And I really liked that about the trick. Um, attached to this question, I also will ask how hard did they work to get this trick um, or if they have achieved it yet. So it doesn't have to be a trick you can do. But for me, um, it took a lot, a lot, a lot of practice to figure out how to get my baton quite high enough horizontally. Um, and move fast enough and the placement and everything but it's really funny because I nobody believes me when I say this but horizontals have always come easier for me which is crazy so I actually caught like my first illusion skill horizontal so I caught like a flat double first a flat one double first like verticals were just always harder and I honestly don't know why but it's just a thing I guess <laughs> um but yes, okay, so the next question is, what is your favorite event? Now, I'm sure all of you are expecting strut to be my answer, but that's actually not the case. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love strut. It's 
a close second <laughs> in my favorite event. Actually, I love it. Um, but I do have to say that freestyle and rhythmic twirl hold a special place in my heart. Um, I started dancing the exact same time I started twirling batons. So I've been dancing since I was two years old. And in dance, the whole thing is about storytelling and conveying the emotion and telling what the whole song is about through your movement. And I love that in rhythmic twirl and freestyle, I get to use those skills that I've learned in dance my whole life. Um, and I can really implement them into my baton twirling and convey the message and make the audience feel the emotions that the song is trying to get across through my movement. And that's just something that's really special to me. And I just, I don't know, it's my favorite. Just because I get to incorporate everything everything I've ever learned and everything and I just I get to make you guys feel something really I mean I guess you can do that in solo too but you know it's it's harder you don't have like your own music um so the next question is what is your best twirling memory okay so before this summer <laughs> that was filled with the best moments of my life um my favorite, my best twirling memory would have to be when I won zero to six beginner pageant at nationals. It was my first time ever competing at NBTA nationals um, as I started twirling USTA. Um, and I was seven years old, twirling six, and I remember standing there and them announcing me as the winner and I truly didn't believe it like I had no idea what was happening I was in shock I was crying and I was seven years old and that was just such a moment in my life where I was like this could be something you know what I mean like I don't know how to explain it like you have this love for something and you never do it because you want to win. You just do it because you love it. And when you achieve something like that, like when you do win, it's like there's another part to this that you kind of forget about when you're twirling. Like when you're training and the endless hours you spend in the gym, it's like, personally, I'm not doing it for the win ever. I'm just doing it because I love to perform and I love to put on a show for you guys and for the judges and everything and I don't know it's just that moment was just something for me I don't even know how to explain it like oh my eyes are watering thinking about it I don't know it was just really really special um okay so the next question is what other activities besides baton do you like to do um okay so when I was younger I had a little bit more free time and I like did extra sports like soccer I think I did t-ball at some point I did a little bit of everything um but right now I spend a lot of my time dancing I love to dance um as I mentioned before it's it played a huge part in my life growing up and I actually spend a lot of time teaching now in the dance community um almost Every night of the week, I'm teaching classes, spending time with my mom, assisting her in classes, um, teaching private lessons of my own, and that's really what I spend a lot of my time doing. Um, I do a lot of choreography too, so I choreograph solos, duos, trios, group numbers, a little bit of everything, and, and yeah, I spend a lot of time teaching baton too, but I guess that's still related to baton, so, um, but yeah. Okay, so if you could change anything about baton twirling, what would you change? Well, this is a really hard question for me because I really love twirling, so it's hard to find something that I'd want to change. But if I do have to find something, I'd have to say that I'd want to change the barriers. I feel like for the world to fall in love with the sport of baton twirling the way I have, I feel like we have to come together as one big family. Um, I love competitions like Twirlmania and Congressional Cup where all of those barriers are just taken down and we're performing and competing as one. We're just one big happy family and I think if we unite like that, 
it would just make the world fall in love with us even more and really let them get to know what baton twirling is all about. Okay, so the next question is, what do you like to spend your free time doing? Well, this is quite boring, but when I'm not twirling baton, teaching dance, or doing schoolwork, or anything like that, I'm reading. And when I'm not doing that, I'm reading. <laughs> so, I'm a huge avid reader. I read every day of my life. I constantly have a book with me, and they've just always played a huge role in my life. I've always felt that, like, you can learn so much from reading, and you just can grow so much through a book, and you learn that there's like, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't know. Books just mean so much to me, really. I don't know. I'm in the car a lot, too. Okay, so I think that's what really started my love for books. I traveled a lot as a kid, and um, I never really, I mean, I had a phone, but I didn't like to be on it all that much, and the opposite of that was books, so I always picked up a book, and read and it was just something I fell in love with and still continue to do now and plan to continue doing the rest of my life. Okay, so what is your future baton twirling goals is the next question. So my goal as a twirler um, has always been to never stop growing. I feel like as an athlete, as a student, as a person, as a coach in every aspect of life, you can continue to grow. You can continue to learn. I feel like the moment you think you know everything is the moment you stop growing. You have to constantly have an open mind and be open to change and you have to grow with the times. Things change over time and you have to be constantly in tune and up to date on all the new things and what's hip and what's in style and what's cool and you just have to keep growing, keep growing. That's just my theory in life. Never stop growing. Keep learning. Okay, and the last question is, what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, if you've ever had a personal conversation with me, you know how much the medical field means to me. Um, I, it is my dream to go into medicine, whether that be surgery or pediatrics or medical examination. I know that sounds really, really creepy, but that was my first love. When I was like 11, I fell in love with the idea of being a coroner, which I know I'm weird, whatever, it's fine. Um, but it's still my love. It's probably what I'll end up doing. It's incredible to me, but I feel like I can't really narrow down my decision making in the medical field until I dip my toes in the water. So as I'm furthering my education, I'm currently in college and a, I'm a pre-med student. So I'm dabbling in all the fields and learning a little bit about what everything's like. So hopefully I'll be able to narrow down my decision making soon, but I definitely see myself in the medical field in the future. So yeah, but that covers all of the questions that I will be asking Lainey's Little Bugs. And I hope you enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about me personally. I love that I've gotten to share my personal side with you guys and hopefully you've been able to connect and gotten to know me a little bit better. So yeah, stay tuned for Stay tuned for the release of the very first Lainey's Little Bug. Um, the video will be going out November 1st. And if there's anything else you'd like to know about me, um, put it in the comments down below. Feel free to ask. I'm a super open person and would love for all of you to get to know me better. So any questions you have, feel free to ask. And always stay tuned for future videos. Bye, guys.